and welcome to Morville Orville, the podcast that reviews episodes of The Orville. This is Mike Allen. I'm joined by G.I. Jolie. Hi, welcome aboard. And Champion. Yep, I'm still here. How you guys doing? Oh, there you are. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> Wasn't sure if you were joining us this week, but good to know that you're back. <laughs> it's good to be back. Awesome. So yeah, <laughs> this is of course the saddest episode in the entire series. And uh, I don't really read previews or news or anything, so I had no idea this was coming. But this episode has a really sad ending that maybe we should not spoil and just save for the end, right? Yeah, let's save it. Yeah, let's Cha- save it. Champion, can you tell our listeners what happens in the episode Home? I certainly can. This episode starts off in the uh, Orville's mess hall, where... So they sit down and... Uh, they have their their weekly ritual, which is um, an arm wrestling match that uh, is basically gambled on by the entire crew. And due to uh, her super strength and Isaac's super robot strength, they are very evenly matched. And I, I, I believe they they pick this one up, and uh, Alars won 14 times to Isaac's 12, or somewhere in that vicinity. Anyhow, they have their arm wrestling match. Isaac wins, but he breaks Alara's arm in the process. Mm-hmm. And she goes to see Dr. Finn, where it uh, it's discovered that her body is losing its strength. She's losing uh, her muscles. She's losing bone density as her body adapts to Earth's diminished gravity uh, compared to on Salea, where it, the gravity is uh, strong enough to crush any of us. Now, the only way for her to regain her strength is to spend some time on her home planet and uh, reacclimate to that gravity. Otherwise, she will lose her superior strength entirely and she'll become as weak and feeble as you or I. <laughs> so, she takes a shuttle down to Zelea and uh, she leaves the crew behind because nobody can join her because obviously they'd be crushed like grapes. So she gets to hang out with her family, uh, Johnny Cab Driver and uh, the Jem'Hadar, and we meet her sister as well, and we uh, get a glimpse into uh, life on Zelea. We learn about how, um, how disdainful the Zeleans are about the military and how nobody respects um, Alara for uh, her career choice. And later on, after this family conflict, um, the dad decides to get everyone an Airbnb. They go for a little uh, weekend retreat at a beach house where they meet a mysterious couple who is vacationing in the house nearby. And things start to go weird. It turns out that this couple is actually trying to kill uh, Alara's dad due to something. They blame him for their son's death in one way or another. Alara comes to the rescue using her uh, security knowledge, and she gets enough of her strength back uh, to subdue them and save the day, saving her parents, saving her sister. And uh, Dr. Finn figures out a way for Alara to keep her strength, but she chooses to stay on Zelea anyway Mm -hmm. to patch things up with her family. So she says goodbye to the Orville, and uh, not everyone lives happily ever after. I know this episode uh, made Mike a little sad. Mm -hmm. Yes, my favorite character is... uh Inexplic- inexplicably removed from the cast and at inexplicably the end, is right yes it's it's at, not what I was expecting no and uh, at the end of the episode when all of the crew members are weeping I was also weeping I was actually weeping even though I've only seen this character in 15 episodes I was still like what the frick are they doing why this character right mm-hmm. uh, which we can talk about later but yeah I thought it was even if this was not, uh, even if it didn't result in the Alara's character being removed from the show, it was a great uh, character development episode for her. I thought, right? 
like showing her home, home world, her relationship with her parents. Again, a lower stakes episode. Of course, at one point their lives are in danger, but it's not a star being destroyed or a, or a planet being destroyed. It's just a basically a, a home invasion, right? This is almost like that movie, um, Jordan Peele's movie. What was it called? Us, right? Haven't seen well, it. But okay. Familiar anyway, with its existence. Yeah, yeah. So basically, yes, I thought this was an excellent episode. Uh, what did you guys think of it? I agree. This episode was was fantastic. Mm-hmm. It was a wonderful exploration into um, Alara's um, life, the reasons why she chose a career outside of Zalea and with the Union. And it was very, very frustrating because after that level of character development, you don't just toss that character aside. Mm-hmm. That's the thing that irritated me the most about this episode, because now we know more about Alara Katan than any other officer on that ship. Mm-hmm. And it just doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense for them to right. build that character up to the degree that they did if they don't intend to have her remain. Right. Uh, G.I. Julie, what do you think? It's funny how they set up uh, the trouble, the drama for her as well, for Alara, mm. uh, or Salayans in general. Like, her or any other Salayan would have to leave the ship or anywhere that isn't a Salayan atmosphere to sort of regain muscle mass. In order to, uh, you know, n- not n- to stay super strong, so she would have had to like continually, like a Jaloja, be going back to Salea, <laughs> but, but not like a Jaloja. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Okay. Well, she'd probably uh, have to pee while she was there, but yeah, but you know, she could also pee before she. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> pee before you leave, okay. <laughs> Um, I agree totally that this episode did so much for her character. So mm-hmm. at first, what was uh, was it command performance, uh, which was the first time we test Alara in season one? Mm-hmm. It was command per- performance, and then the one about the fears. What is that episode called again? It was only. Just yesterday, that we I don't about. remember. <laughs> I don't. Remember. But anyway, that episode they set it up mm-hmm. where like she's still insecure about uh, who she is, and then uh, you find out like it was a fire that happened when she was a child, and oh, firestorm. That's Sorry. it, mm-hmm. firestorm. <laughs> so they use into the fold, firestorm, and then this one uh, to kind of s- set Alara up when you. Or sorry, to to sort of develop her character and really, really, I would say this is the ultimate, like, flesh out of her character. Mm -hmm. You finally get to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. It's her needing validation from her own family. Um, I love, just like going to Mockless and seeing that there are an entire race of, um, uh, like, quote, males... Salea is an entire race of academics who value Mm -hmm. academia above, you know, joining the army is what they equate, uh, you know, her, her, her time on in Starfleet with. Mm -hmm. And um, even the way her sister talks to her about it, she's like, oh, it's just, it's so it's like in a romantic way. She's like, you know, I'm just here learning and getting my PhD and then getting married, but you're off having adventures. And like, you were in 2d space. That's so crazy. And like, um, you're, I wonder if, if that's the way will always be the way of the world. Like the people with the brains are always going to wish for, you know, breaking up fights and adventure and the, and vice versa. So anyway, this, episode marries both the brains and the brawn need the brains need the brawn in order to survive Mm -hmm. and in probably the most touching scene 
that I've ever seen between the two of them. Uh, there's actually two. Alara, without any hesitation. Um, I'm going to skip the scene where she gives her, her dad shit about never telling her that he, mm-hmm. he just needed to like believe in her. She just needed to hear the words. He didn't have to mean it. He just had to be a father. And a daughter needs to hear and be encouraged by their parents. Mm-hmm. Um, she later, when she regains a bit of her strength and the home invaders are kind of taking over, she gives her dad a gun. You know, he's mm-hmm. um, he's light on his feet a little. <laughs> so he's, they all are. They've never had to handle weapons. And she's like, no, I believe... I believe you can do it. You can do it. I believe you. And it's, he looks at her and he's like, you see the glimmer in his eye. And he's like, that's what that's like. That's mm-hmm. what that's like to tell my daughter that, that which I never told her. And then at the end, when he, she actually saves their lives, he's like in tears. He is so proud of her. He tells her he's proud of her. That had me crying the most. Mm-hmm. Never mind her leaving the ship and her friends and her act like her chosen family. I, now I did I, I I suspected this when I was watching it, but it's confirmed by you know the behind the scenes notes that that final scene was filmed last, which is exactly how you should do it because the actors knew this was the last time they were going to see Halston Sage in a while. So I think their emotions real, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was done in one take. You can see that everyone's crying, and it's because they're also missing the actress, right? So I thought that was a really smart decision. No dialogue, just her walking around to each person, hugging them. Uh, I thought that was so well done, you know? Um, Still in the character, though, because you notice she doesn't hug Isaac. Isaac just kind of gives her a wave. So I thought that was really well done. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I I thought it was a great episode, yeah, so. Do either of you know why Halston Sage uh, had to leave the show? Like, was so, this something that she chose, or... I've done some extensive research, because this, uh, you know, played you to my dreams. But um, <laughs> basically, there's a there's nothing confirmed on the website. There's nothing confirmed officially, but there are rumors. Now, first of all, Halston Sage has said that it wasn't her decision, which means she didn't quit. Um, she also hasn't really been fired because she's already been back on the show and the producers say they're welcome to have her come back as a guest star but not as a regular. So then the question is, well, why? So anyway, I watched this video online, YouTube, where some guy theorizes that, well, it's obvious that her character developed as much as it could, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. There are other characters in the show that are weaker than her character and they're still on the show, so it's not that. The only official concrete thing that I've come across is that apparently she dated Seth MacFarlane. So that would explain where, you know, why if they did break up, which I believe they did. In fact, I think they broke up before the beginning of season two. Hmm. So that's probably the most obvious explanation, right? Is of what went down there. That's not the explanation I wanted to hear. That's, I don't like that. I don't like the fact that he dated her either. But anyway. (laughs) And then when you find out that probably... It was because Zac Efron was in the picture. I mean, Seth MacFarlane seems like small potatoes at that point. <laughs> oh, did she date him? <laughs> she either is dating him or was dating him. Mm. But, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he was part of the reason. <laughs> I'm I, wonder, I wonder if right Seth MacFarlane yeah. did a flyby. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> he 1,000% did. Uh, um... You know what, though? I got to say, if, if, I mean, if Seth MacFarlane did pull a Hitchcock and, like, you know, oust her from the show, he certainly gave her a nice send off. So I don't think it ended, uh, you know, what's the word when a relationship ends badly? It's not amicably. What's the opposite of that? Poorly? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, there you go. Is that too yeah. diplomatic? Yeah, I don't know. And if it did end poorly, he certainly gave her a good send off. So who knows what happened? But I think the show is lesser for it. And I also, no offense, I am not a fan of her replacement at all. So, well, her her replacement was another Slayan, wasn't it? Yes, but she's nothing like her. I was gonna say she's no, she is nothing like her, but she brings uh, a nostalgia. Yeah. From another, you know, from 
another part of television history for other people. So she may not necessarily be as attractive to you, which is, I'm suspecting is part of the reason. Well, but... it's also other things, but whatever. I mean, you could use other points to invalidate your opinion, but I'm going to go with your sexual attraction to the character yeah, or the actress. It, but, so, uh... yeah, but I mean, I will agree with most people where she seems kind of uh, dull, but again, what are they going to do with another Salayan? They just had a Salayan right. fully develop in front of our eyes, and then mm-hmm. they did that. So she kind of got the short end of the straw mm-hmm. as it was chosen in the last episode. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, Ian, any other thoughts? Well, I don't know. Very good episode. I, I liked, I, I really enjoyed actually, as soon as they dropped her off, when she suddenly went from being the strongest person on the show mm-hmm. to the weakest person on the show, mm-hmm. so we got we got to see that flip. Sure, and it was and it was very, very abrupt and very jarring, but in a way that worked, just to to sort of illustrate exactly how how am I going to put this? Just. Is we we learn that she's always been the the weaker person on sure. her home planet, right? right? She was she wasn't as you know intelligent as her as her peers. She always struggled in school, and she had to get away because it it was you know there were, she couldn't she couldn't thrive in that environment the way that she could on the Orville, mm-hmm. and it was interesting mm-hmm. to see all of a sudden she can't even walk around. All of a sudden, she's confined to a chair. I thought that that was uh, pretty compelling. Right, right. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I mean, um, again, I, I I just love the fact that and TNG did this a lot, right? Where they'd focus on um, Crusher or Troy or Jordy, completely on their own, isolated from the rest of the crew. And even though obviously I love the rest of the crew, it was nice to see that the show. This episode did not suffer for it one bit, mm-hmm. you know? I thought that was so great. Um, oh, there was one thing about this episode that annoyed me. One little tiny uh-oh, thing. And uh-oh. I'm going to talk about it because I like sure. talking about little things that annoy me. When they <laughs> when they arrive at their Airbnb, they look and they're astounded. Oh, my goodness. Look, it's a beautiful space deer. And Alara's sister walks right up to the space deer and pets it. I haven't seen a space deer in years. But you can walk right up to it and pet it. So they're essentially domesticated. So why are you so surprised? That's it. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. And Good then point. doesn't she dream about, like, Alara in her dreams dreams about riding one on the beach? Right. But you know, you know what's funny? I didn't even notice this. She wasn't in makeup. She wasn't in her alien uh, makeup. Solarin. Really? Yeah, she was in it. She was normal human. What? Yeah. Oh, was she? Maybe she was dreaming about being human. Yeah, that's what the producers say. They kind of wanted to hint at that. Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. It's kind of sad too, because it's like, it's, it, it shows that there's an inner conflict within mm-hmm. her. Ultimately, when her de- father, because later her father tells her he's proud of her, and that mm-hmm. is why she chooses to say because she realizes that it, instead of running away from the issue with her biological family, that she should actually. Um, try to solve it to mm-hmm. get some clarity and closure for herself. Um, she has clarity and closure with her chosen family. Mm-hmm. Um, she wishes she fit in a little bit more probably, but she dreams that she could fit in and have both lives while she rides the Salayan horse on the beach while it's five <laughs> sunset, you know, like mm-hmm. it's so, it's like, it's so sad. This episode no matter what you think of Alara at this point, and I would, I will challenge and fight anybody who thinks that she's a weak character after this episode. No, because she's my great. Go- because my God, she's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just so sad, and it's maddening, and it's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. And there's, it, it's so emotional that it's hard to remember the jokes. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, but thankfully I have my reel <laughs> that I can play live. If you guys want to hear it, this is unedited. I'll play this. This will remind us of what my favorite jokes were. Ready, guys? And let's hear it. Home. You know, it's places like this make me realize, God, I'm trash. Hopefully, we're trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so god! Hard. Oh my god! Like flawless delivery. I'm liking Malloy more and more every episode. He Agreed. is so funny. And you're right. That delivery was absolutely perfect. Right. Did not. Did not say like it's. That that line hit me like a left hook. Right, I didn't see it coming at all. And you notice Seth MacFarlane is completely like, "What the fuck?" It was so good. Um, My whole family. Yep, yep. Oh, that it, you know what that reminds me of of a last season when um when he, him and him and Lamar are in Bordas's apartment and. Bordas uh, it, it watches Rudolph Red Nose Ranger and he takes off. And then um, Lamar's like, wait a minute, he just left his uh, newborn in a room with two drunk dudes. And then Malloy's like, ha, oh, reminds me of my dad. God, I, <laughs> God, I miss him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I got, a, I think I got one more here. Wait, listen, guys. When the new security chief <laughs> explains his appendage. And he says that he can just pound food. Just pound it. <laughs> yeah, I remember the elephant face guy. Oh my god. He was so funny. Remember, he was like bitching. It's just like, you know, these are, again, these are absolutely characters that could appear on like Family Guy or something, but they're so dead on. Like, I don't know. He's just like Lieutenant Dan, right? Like another, just an, like a semi annoying, but semi funny, like side character that I don't remember if he comes back, but I hope he does. No, but oh my god, that guy. Do you know what? That guy was probably the best comic relief because you get the whole crew together and they're like they're familiar with each other and uh they they've just introduced like some new characters but they didn't make a return in this episode and it's assumed that this guy's like maybe just an in interim security officer. Um and he like brings his food onto the deck. Right, right. Yes, the sound. And it's, <laughs> and it's just like clacking it and yeah. they all look at him and he's and, and Ed's like you could you could take a break if you want you know you yeah. could just like have yeah. your lunch in the mess hall he's like oh no it's great I I love to like you, he's just one of those like keyboard uh, you know he's into his job so much he's right. got to eat while he works uh -huh. oh god hilarious <laughs> hilarious Oh, my esophagus, our species, is has evolved. We pound back so much food uh, that we have a second esophagus. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and Ed offers him new uniforms. He's like, no, nah, I got tons. I got yeah, tons. yeah. <laughs> and also, what a contrast to uh, Alara, right? Like, completely opposite. Yeah. Anyway. And just like a little you could tell that ed and kelly are just like a little disgusted mm -hmm. but they have to remain professional and like you know they they're also not speciesist so mm -hmm. oh god so yeah anyway i was weeping like a child at the end of this episode so i did love it obviously but i'm very I, like alara is not one seventh of the appeal to the of the show to me she's like one half so i'm very uh, I'm very uh, the wind like the the wind has been knocked from my sails, but I'll get by. I'll I'll keep watching the show. Mike, we're here for you. Thank if you. you need a hug, thank you. We got you. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I am, and if this is not a pun, worlds away. Yeah. So, Ian will have to hug you for me. That's fine. I'll, I'll settle for Ian. Maybe you can just give me a wave. I'll settle for a wave. Just like Isaac's <laughs> wave. So even though Alara Katana is gone, I'm going to keep watching and reviewing the show. So be sure to join us again next episode as we continue to review season two. And then we'll eventually get to season three when it starts. And you can find every episode of Morville Orville on the same place that you found this one. But if you can seek it out, then find www.comicbooksyndicate.com and find every episode of Morville Overall as well as every episode of Full Volume Podcast, Here Comes the Spider Cast, and Flea Market Fantasy, and Comic Book Syndicate. So there you go. I want to thank G.I. Jolie and Champion for joining me again. Thank you. Hello. All right. And until next time, there's more where that came from. Hello.